Senator Tammy Baldwin is on the line with us. Uh, U.S. Senator Hi. From Wisconsin. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Baldwin. Delighted. Baldwin.senate.gov, of course, the website. And uh, I understand it, it's this is Equal Pay Day, and you're calling it for support for the, for the Paycheck for uh, Fairness Act. Uh, Senator Baldwin, welcome to the program. And uh, what's up with this? Well, on uh, Equal Pay Day, we're trying to raise awareness about some of the policies that we still need to put in place in order to try to close the wage gap that exists between um, women and men in this country. It's been something that's plagued us for decades and decades, and now that women are nearly half the workforce, um, this has a huge impact on uh, you know, growing our middle class. Um, it has huge impacts on retirement security. Uh, there's a there's a significant uh, wage gap that's that's uh, plagued us for decades. It's time to get the tools in place to close it. How do you respond to the uh, the people from, for example, the Independent Women's Forum who come on this program with some regularity and say, "Oh, but you know, those women they just." They want to have that flexibility so that they can go home and have babies. So if their pay is a little lower, that's the reasonable trade-out for that. Or because they occasionally leave the workplace to have children and then come back in, when you average their lifetime pay, of course it's going to be lower, those kinds of things. Well, the, the facts don't bear those arguments out at all. And what we're talking about, uh, you know, in the 60s, we finally passed the Equal Pay Act, where... Um, you know, if if you're working side by side, somebody with the same experience, the same uh, uh, responsibilities at the job, you ought to be paid the same. And uh, we're still talking about that. What we're what we've been able to track for, as I said, decades now, is unequal pay for equal uh, responsibility and experience on the job. Um, or, you know, years ago we also talked about comparable pay for comparable work when you're looking at whole classifications of female dominated professions and male dominated professions. But, um, you know, those are really distractions that are thrown out. Uh, uh, we're talking about getting the same compensation if you have the same level of experience, same level of responsibility uh, in jobs. Why would any billionaire fund an organization or a think tank to put out the kind of information that um, there's no there there, there's nothing to worry about, women prefer, you know, making 70 cents on the dollar because of the, you know, so-called flexibility, blah blah. blah What, what's, uh, what's in it for them? I don't, I don't get where these folks come from. And why is this even called a conservative position? Yeah, I mean, you ask me to put myself in someone's brain that I really don't understand. So, uh, so it's a tricky question in that. I mean, um, people have opposed these efforts for years. Sometimes it comes from uh, their views of the role of women in the world and the role of women in the economy. But they got to get with uh, the program because today, as I mentioned earlier, women are 50% of the workforce. Mm. And um, families rely on the wages and salaries of women to make ends meet. We know that uh, the middle class wages in America, uh, certainly in my home state of Wisconsin, have been stagnant. In fact, we're losing ground. And when you have uh, in, in Wisconsin a very stubborn, women get 78 uh, cents for every dollar paid to a man, and it's been sort of in that range for, you know, stubbornly for, for decades, uh, that's a pay gap of nearly, well, over $10,000 for a woman who's working full time. That's significant uh, money right now in such a stressed economy when families are trying to make ends meet and maybe put a little aside for retirement or the children, children's college fund, et cetera. These are real dollars, and they are um, very significant to the well-being of our families and our middle class. Yeah, not to mention the impact that they'll have when that woman retires and is on Social Security. Which... Exactly. So uh, are there any... Any markers out there that we can use? Any any other countries that I you know I know for example in Norway they you know forty percent of their parliament is female by law I believe, 
Um, a large number of women very politically active in Iceland. We did our show from there for a week. Um, I don't know if it's the consequence of, of a, uh, a mandate or a, what the, the right-wingers would call a quota of some sort, or just that that's historically been a matrilineal society or a matriarchal, more of a matriarchal society, somewhat, somewhat less than us anyway, uh, or more so than us. Um, are, there, are there examples out there that we should be looking at or to? Well, there's certainly been leaders in the private sector and the public sector on these issues. You know, it, it's interesting you should ask me this question because actually this was the first public policy issue I ever worked on as a newly minted college graduate um, when I, uh, I got uh, a position in um, Wisconsin looking at the issue of comparable worth. But you can actually... Uh, study your workforce and study uh, and compare certain job classifications and um, and and push forward policies to uh, mandate and demand equity. Now we don't necessarily expect that all private sector um, entities are going to do this, but what the uh, uh, Paycheck Fairness Act does is at least gives individuals who might be injured by discriminatory pay schemes to have the tools to fight back. And that's really mm. as simple as, as what we're looking at right now. You know, the Lilly Ledbetter law was the first step, and this is the companion step. Correct me if my numbers are wrong. This is just purely from recollection, and it's at probably at least a year old. But my recollection is that the average net worth of an intact white family in the United States is in the 70s or $80,000. That the average net worth of an intact African-American family in the United States is in the neighborhood of around $5,000, and that the average net worth of a white woman, single white woman, in the workforce in the United States is under $2,000, and of a woman of color is actually net negative. Um, whether those numbers are accurate to the dollar, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that spread is, is pretty real. And it reflects, in some ways, you know, the social capital, this, this, this you know, women... Uh, it, it could not even vote in the United States in, until, you know, 90 years ago, and, and were pretty much the property of their husbands until 100 years ago. Um, African Americans were, were the property of whites and, until f slightly before that. What do we do about that, and, and what are your thoughts on those, and, 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 how, and, and, and how do we also bring women of color into this conversation? Well, these are great questions, and let me let me just say a couple of things. Um, I've been studying and sort of trying to dig fairly deeply into not so much the net worth of Wisconsin families of various demographic backgrounds, but um, more uh, you know uh, the average family uh, wage or mm -hmm. or uh, annual salary. And so the statistics you just did by memory comport very. Um, closely to what I've just been looking at in terms of just annual um, uh, differences. And, um, you know, it's something we have to be very concerned about. What I would point to uh, is, um, for example, uh, take one of the biggest cities, well, the biggest city in the state of Wisconsin, and, um, and that's the city of Milwaukee, formerly a uh, huge, uh, you know, industrial city, a lot of manufacturing, um, jobs uh, that created a vibrant and healthy black middle class in the years after World War II. Um, and, uh, and then as so many of those manufacturing jobs were offshored uh, and, um, you know, the, 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 most recent to be hired were the first to be laid off. And so you saw a, a, a crippling effect in certain um, Milwaukee neighborhoods. Um, likewise, women didn't start joining the workforce in huge numbers until you know, the 70s and 80s. And if you look at it, women joining the workforce is the story of why the middle class didn't start contracting a decade or two earlier. Hmm. Um, but again, when you have uh, uh, huge, uh, you know, recessionary uh, uh, impacts like we've just had, um, if the female, uh, you know, the female workforce is some of the more recently hired in terms of, you know, jobs where you have long uh, tenure, 
um, again, there's are the individuals who might be the first to be let go. Mm-hmm. And so I think, you know, it, it varies a lot, but there's, uh, whether it's the, uh, more distant underpinnings of discrimination in our country and in our nation's history, or the more recent ones. Yeah, so they're more they fragile. Compound, they compound the, the impact of rough economic times. Right. We have a, a, about a half a minute left here. I'm sorry, uh, the tyranny of the clock here. What solutions do you suggest? Well, on the very specific issue of... Um, equal pay for equal work. Uh, I am using this day to highlight the um, uh, need to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. But on the need to grow the middle class again, boy, there's a lot of strategies. Raise the, raise the minimum wage, bring manufacturing back, start making things in America again. We have a lot of strategies that we ought to be uh, pushing full throttle. You are singing my song. Senator Tammy Baldwin, Uh, the great state of Wisconsin. Thank you so much. Thank you.